Lakeview Health video podcast series. I'm Dr. Philip Hemphill, the Chief Clinical Officer here at Lakeview Health. Um, with me today is uh, Peter Godfrey from uh, Four Circles Recovery Center. He's, this is in uh, Horseshoe, North Carolina. He's a quality manager, a licensed clinical social worker, and a licensed clinical addiction specialist. Thank you for joining us, Peter. Thanks very much. So I heard a phrase you like to use to empower clients, uh, do it, live it, and become it. Can you talk about the links uh, that this phrase has to like addiction and mental health recovery? Yeah, that is actually not a, uh, it's not a phrase that I picked up from my mental health or substance abuse work. Um, but it turns out to hold some water in a, in a lot of different ways. Um, it began to be more and more relevant as I observed people's personas that they develop in substance use. Mm -hmm. And it became pretty obvious that uh, when a person does something and they, they continue at that behavior, then it, it becomes um, something that uh, is normal and commonplace. And then eventually they embrace that as a part of who they are. And so for substance use, you see some problematic personas that are hard to give up. Mm -hmm. And well, great news is that it works in the other direction too. Uh, you know, uh, a person can identify themselves as a well, baseball player, mm -hmm. for example. How did they become a baseball player? They did baseball, right? They did baseball and they continued at it, so they, they do it, live it, become it, become a baseball player, mm -hmm. become, become a person in recovery. And that's, uh, that's that. It's a really uh, important behavioral health approach um, at Four Circles um, because we ask them to do things sometimes that don't make sense. It's an experiential program. You know, they're not sure why. Um, the behavioral health approach says, says uh, if I do it, I may, I may figure out why I'm doing it after sometimes. And uh, doing something important, sticking to it, you can become something. Mm -hmm. And you internalize it, internalize it um, that way. And, and so you're essentially having a person refashion their identity and integrating themselves into sort of accepting uh, this identity of who they are. Yeah, the, the parts, the parts of a person. And we've, yeah, we've learned a lot, you know, if you've been in the field of substance abuse, mental health, you've seen it a lot, where you have, you have folks who um, adopt a different sort of individuality for themselves. Yeah, <clears throat> they, uh, they, they have parts, and they have to incorporate the parts. Sometimes it's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that part of me quiet down, try to enhance this part by doing things that feed that part. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what like aspects of the hiking and camping experiences do you see as being uh, the most influential in affecting people uh, in this process? <laughs> the challenges that, that they'll face in the wilderness are... Um, there, there's a variety. There's a variety of challenges. It could be that, it could be that this mountain is going to be my breakthrough, mm -hmm. or it could be, it could be, um, I need a, my, I need a fire, and that's my breakthrough. Or, um, so what we have is, uh, we have stressors uh, that would be considered. Uh, well, we, I used to hear you stress as opposed to distress. I don't hear that much anymore. I think that was a health class mm -hmm. thing. Um, the Four Circles operates on this uh, challenge by choice and healthy stress um, experience. Mm -hmm. And well, we, we do find clients that, that come to the boundaries of their coping skills and they learn new coping skills because they must, because 
it's a necessity because that's their reality. Their position is they're in the back country and they, they must get to that campsite, which is over the mountain. <laughs> so there's, um, so that might be one, um, but it could be a variety of things. It could be the cold or it could be, uh, it could be another person in my group. Yeah. Uh, you have that, you have that in other treatment centers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it could be a lot of things. And we, we hope to see them come to that threshold so that they can learn new coping skills. That's, that's part of the wilderness experience. So I heard you talk about both internal and external motivation mm -hmm. and those not being mutually exclusive. Um, what's your understanding of how these uh, weave together and the benefit to your client? Lots of clients in early recovery feel leveraged, right? Um, could be legal, could be family, could be social services. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot, of, a lot of folks in early recovery feel that pressure from outside. Um, I work with a lot of young adults, um, a lot of young men who might want to do something but as soon as somebody tells them they have to, it changes everything. I, could, I, might, I might be motivated to exercise and I'm, I have a plan of doing 20 push-ups every day. But if somebody tells me that I must, you have to do 20 push-ups every day. That diminishes my likelihood of wanting to do them. Sure. So we, uh, yeah, we, we fight that battle. We remind folks like, okay, so, yeah, you are leveraged into this. And you, but don't you, you know, if you set that aside, don't you have some reasons for wanting to do it for yourself? We have to really work, we have to work that. And we do a lot of, um, we do a lot of motivational interviewing on that. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our clients are that young adult age range. Their family, family does have them securely leveraged into treatment. Mm -hmm. And they have to come to grips with that. Um, but they can, and they see that the external motivation becomes less meaningful uh, while they're in our care, you know, in our stay. You know, for some of them, may, uh, they hate being at four circles at the beginning, and it's because they're leveraged into it. Yeah. And then halfway through, they're like, I get it. By the time it's over, they're like, I'm sad that I have to leave. Um, you mentioned families, and I was wondering about your uh, integration of the family or the support system. Mm -hmm and how you use experiential therapy with them as well. Uh, we have a three-day family workshop, experiential family workshop. It's once a month. Uh -huh. um, and it's open to family, any family members. Most of our clients are in the young adult side, so we see mostly uh, parents, you know, sure. uh, middle-aged uh, sort of um, mid-adult years. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not always the case. We also see spouses or sometimes even step siblings and and uh, we invite them and we it's a uh, it's about 50 maybe 50 percent education 50 percent experiential and uh, we do those um, metaphorical activities and um, well uh, I, it won't be on this interview but earlier today we just did uh, two of those metaphorical activities yeah and but at family workshop um, we do the challenge course mm -hmm. and we uh, we do a, the uh, a very important work around codependency um, family members uh, some some have gotten to the point where it's really obvious what they have to do um, they have to they have to draw really firm boundaries mm -hmm. That's the majority, but those boundaries are not secure. So we, we bring the family in, and we do activities and education, and and uh, we even do a, a transition ceremony for the family members. We do a little bit of a solo experience where they uh, get to um, confront for themselves their mixed feelings about uh, about the addiction there their identified client because they, they face a lot of fear about what will happen if they don't support this person right 
So they have a lot of mixed feelings, and we we address it. We address it in a way that hopefully sticks, because we we provoke some of those feelings in the in the family workshop. Say, so learn to cope with them. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> and then they leave with a they leave with a plan. They leave with an intention that they set for themselves. Yeah. Well, Peter, I really appreciate you uh, spending some time with us here today. I know, you know, being inside like this is a little different for you. You probably, I'll see, you know, you're ready to go. Uh, get back to the, the wilderness here. Maybe. And, um, but for those of you watching who want to learn more about Four Circle Recovery, uh, you know, you can go to fourcirclerecovery.com. And again, thank you again for joining us here in Jacksonville, Florida. I really appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you very much for having me. I enjoyed it a lot. For those of you interested in learning more about Lakeview, you can visit us at lakeviewhealth.com or reach us 24-7 at 866-887-0142. That's 866-887-0142.